So let's take a look at some of the basic properties of logarithms. So it helps to remember what a log is. Suppose log to base a of c is equal to b. Then our definition says that a to power b is equal to c. Now we can evaluate a to power b whether or not b is positive, negative, or zero. But since a must be greater than zero, then a to power b must be positive. And remember, equals means replaceable. If a to power b must be positive, then c must be positive. And so that means that the expression log to base a of c is only defined if c is positive, at least for now. Well, let's see what else we can determine. Suppose I want to find the log to base a of 1. So again, we'll set this up as an equation. Let x be log to base a of 1. This transforms into a new equation. a to power x equals 1. And let's see if we can solve this. So the thing to remember is that since a to power 0 is equal to 1 for any value of a, we know that x has to be 0. And so this suggests the following theorem. For any base, the log of 1 is equal to 0. Let's see how log plays with products. Suppose the log to base a of something is equal to c, and the log to base a of something else is equal to d. Can we say anything about the log to base a of the product p times q? Well, definitions are the whole of mathematics, all else is commentary, so let's think about what it means when we say that the log to base a of p is c, and the log to base a of q is equal to d. Both of these statements translate into exponential expressions. a to power c is equal to p, a to power d is equal to q. Now I'd like to say something about p times q, so let's multiply them together. And notice that I now have a product of exponents, so I can rewrite that product as a to the power c plus d. Now I'll hit both sides with a log. And the important thing to remember about logs is that logs are exponents. So the log to base a of pq is the exponent whatever I need to raise a to to get pq. In other words, it's going to be c plus d. But wait, equals means replaceable. So I know that c is the same as log to base a of p, and I know that d is the same as log to base a of q. So I can replace them. And this suggests a general result. For any base, the log to base a of pq is the log to base a of p, plus the log to base a of q. Sometimes we say this as the log of a product is the sum of the logs. How about quotients? Again, suppose that the log to base a of p is something, and the log to base a of q is something else. What about the log of the quotient p over q? And once again, Definitions are the whole of mathematics, all else is commentary. Because we know the log of base a of p is c, and the log to base a of q is d, we can rewrite these in exponential form. Since I want to know something about the quotient p over q, I can set that down. Since I know something about how to divide exponential expressions, I can simplify. And again, the log is the exponent. So the log to base a of p over q is the exponent c minus d. And equals means replaceable. Every time I see c, I can replace it with log to base a of p. Every time I see d, I can replace it with log to base a of q. And as before, this suggests a general result for any base the log to base a of p over q 
is the log to base a of p minus the log to base a of q. And again, we sometimes state this, the log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. How about powers? Suppose the log to base a of p is c. What about the log to base a of p to the n? So again, you know the definition. If log to base a of p is c, then we can rewrite that in exponential form. Since we want to know something about p to the n, we'll find p to the n. We'll apply our rules of exponents. We'll hit both sides with a log. And we know that c is the same as log to base a of p. And so this gives us a result. For any base, log to base a of p to the n is n times the log to base a of p. You could say that the power comes out front. So let's play around with these rules. Suppose that log of a is 5 and log of b is 3. Let's find the log of 1 over a and the log of square root of b. So again, how you speak influences how you think. And so you might want to speak of this 1 over a as 1 divided by a, which says that it's a quotient. So we might want to bring in our rule for the log of a quotient. So the log of 1 divided by a is log of 1 minus the log of a. But wait, there's more. We have this log of 1. And we know something about the log of 1. For any base, the log of 1 is equal to 0. So we can simplify our expression. And we can do some arithmetic. How about the log of the square root of b? So remember, a square root is the same as an exponent, 1 half. So this log square root of b is the same as log of b to the power 1 half. But wait, we know how to handle the log of a power. The exponent comes out front. And we know the log of b is equal to 3, so we'll replace that and do some arithmetic. How about the log of, well, frightening horrible mess? But that's OK. We'll take it one step at a time. And again, how you speak influences how you think. So here we have log of a cubed over, no, wait, that's divided by b squared c to the fifth. So that's a divided by, so I have the log of a quotient is going to be the difference of the logs. So the first reduction, log numerator minus log denominator. Now let's take a look at these each separately. This is log of a to the third. That's a to power three. So we use our power rule. That exponent comes out front. This other term, this is log of b squared c to the fifth. Wait, no, that's b squared times c to the fifth. This is a product, so we can apply our log of a product rule. And importantly, because we're subtracting this log, we have to make sure that we use parentheses. This is log of b to the second power, so we can use our log of a power. And likewise for our log of c to the fifth. And we know our values of log a, log b, and log c. So we'll substitute those in and do a little bit of arithmetic.